an American League battle, East versus Central. It's the Toronto Blue Jays against the Chicago White Sox. It's Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Will they be able to limit the bat of Carlos Quinton? Well, we're going to find out. We're set to go. U.S. Cellular Field, always a delight to watch a ball game here in the home of the White Sox. April is in the books. 2K Sports welcomes you, our broadcast of MLB. Starting pitcher, John Danks. Steve, how's he going to handle these Toronto bats in this game? With John Danks on the mound, you get to watch a young guy who's crafty, not overpowering. He has good stuff, but it's not the kind of stuff that'll blow you away. He's a pitcher. He works the corners and tries to expand the zone. But there are times where he becomes too defensive, and he nibbles. He has to work ahead in the count and get strike one. Brought to you by Pepsi, here's the Blue Jays lineup. John, who do we keep? Yeah, the Blue Jays losing their last game. Right now 0-1, they look to regain some confidence here. Second of four against the White Sox. Well, Gary, this team is better than their record has indicated. Just missed with the fastball, 1-0. Well, he tries to pull back. Home plate umpire says he did. They want to challenge that, though. Absolutely right. This ball club uh, is not a team that's going to have a lot of losing streaks. you got to believe they're about ready to get out of the swing. Sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. Rios will field. And he gets over and grabs it with the left. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. Highlight, Steve, for these fielders. Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And we've got Snyder batting. Well, John Danks is a left-handed pitcher, kind of in the mold of a Mark Burley. Left-handers, they both keep the ball down the zone. They pitch with movement. Danks fastball a little bit better. He can reach the low to mid-90s on occasion. Thing is, though, 28 home runs given up. He needs to keep the ball in the ballpark, and then you see his win total go up from 13 to a lot higher than that. This one's going to be fielded by Ramirez. That's the second out of the inning. Certainly uh, for Danks, one of the problems is, is learning to stay out of that too fat part of the strike zone. Sometimes he just puts pitchers right down the middle and really doesn't have to because he's he's solid enough to keep the ball down low most of the time. Well, he really is, and he has such great mechanics, too. I mean, he and Mark Burley, they're very similar when you watch him pitch. If it was just a silhouette of him, you'd think that it could be either one of them on the mound that particular day. But he does give up a lot of home runs. Like you said, he needs to be able to find corners more. When he does, he'll be more consistent and a bigger winner. And Lind lays off that low pitch. This cut fastball is a very effective pitch for this guy because it allows him to set up all of his other pitches. And Adam Lind strikes out, could not make contact. So John Danks gets him three up, three down. He gets through the first inning without allowing a hit. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. And we've got Ricky Romero out on the mound. He's starting the game for Toronto. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. Young Ricky Romero, young left-hander out on the mound in this one. A kid who understands what he needs to do to be effective. Use a sequence of pitches, change speeds, and keep hitters off. Swing liner back up the middle. And the leadoff man of this ball game's on board. See if they get it started early. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? If you want to see power in the lineup, just look at Carlos Quentin. This guy can hit it out of the ballpark and hit it out anywhere. It doesn't matter if he's pitched away, he'll take it to right. If he's pitched in, he'll hit it to left field. Great power stroke, but the thing he's been working on this year is his consistency. Well, here's how Toronto will stack up defensively. Scouting these fielders, Steve. Aaron Hills is much of a grinder on defense as he is on offense. This guy is always ready to make a play. He never takes a pitch off. RBI chance goes to Paul Canerco, leading the league in home runs. On the way. Takes a swing, but he's too late on that one. Strike one. That's it foul by Canerco. That swung on, line towards the gap and left center. That one in the alley. This could be two or more. He throws, and he scores from second base. 
And they tag him close at home. He wanted that Number run. He didn't get it. Chicago White Sox. Well, that's three right consecutive here. hits he's Number given 20. up. He can't be out of gas Carlos. yet. He just has to bear down and get somebody out. They don't want to go to the bullpen this early in the game. Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. And some production being seen in this game early. And they've got a chance now to extend. Hit sharply towards the hole. And they get him at first base. Good hustle by the pitcher to get over there. Now great work by the pitcher there. He normally not called upon to play first base. He does a nice job completing the task and getting the out. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Off to a good start here. It's Aaron Hill to lead it off. You well, we saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. Danks gets set and delivers. Fastball misses away, 1 0. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And that one's going to drop in. That's their first hit. And Hill's trying to stretch it. And it's up against the wall. Now heading to third base. Coming to bat for the Toronto well, this Blue is a game. great way to start third this base. inning. No Number one seven. out. Leads off Edwin with a big triple. 90 feet away from scoring a run. Now anything will score him. A ground out, a wild pitch, a pass ball, just about any way to score. He is going to get it done. And Edwin Encarnacion standing in. Oh that my. pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. It gets down. That will drive in Hill. And they can't cut it off. It'll roll to the wall. Encarnacion headed to third. Toronto's Toronto offense region. creating multiple opportunities. Three. WPA graph. Let's see what damage was done with that double, courtesy of Pepsi. And Ruiz settles in. This club knew it had to match some production here, and they've done it. Well, they bounce right back and tie this baby up with that one, Gary. Oh. Too far outside, 1-0. Oh. Well, that's important early in the ball game. You want to make this into a seesaw battle. That's what they've done. Now, you're going to be all right with a seesaw battle. Sometimes that makes you nauseous. You're going to feel okay? You check. There's a swing. Fly ball down the line and left. And there's another one. Couple of quick hits. And Uncarnacion scores. For the Toronto Toronto's game. offense First creating game. multiple opportunities. Mile over well, now after giving up three straight hits, the manager has to start thinking about getting somebody up in the pen. Oh, that pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. Pauses and now the 1-0. Holds up, but it's a called strike. Evens the count at one. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Call fastball. Now the count one and two. A nice four-seamer right there. That one's clearly on the outside corner. He hit the spot. He deals. And Lyle Overbay goes down swinging. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. It's McDonald at Blake. Lifetime numbers 219 off the White Sox. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. It's all about changing speeds, hitting your spots as a pitcher. That curveball down and away, nobody's going to touch that. Hot shot towards the hole. Toronto, here's a position to get something done. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate, and he took advantage of it. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. The second, there's one. And two, a double play. Well, they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. The Blue Jays gaining the upper hand here. Alex Rios to lead off. Center fielder, number 51, Alex Rios. And it's hit well off the bat of Rios. This one's going to be fielded by Wells. 
Rome's over, puts it away. And a chance here to check out the league's batting leaders, courtesy of State Farm. Now we see some tremendous hitters on this list, guys who understand how to make good contact at the plate and get the good part of the bat on the ball on a consistent basis. It's going to be Przinsky. Well, Ricky Romero for the 2009 Blue Jays put together a pretty solid rookie season with the 13 win. ERA a little high in 4.3, but he was hurt for a little while, but he came back, and I tell you, He's got something to work with. Pretty solid year for the young man. And that'll put Brzezinski on first. And here are the standings on the we'll Central back. Division we'll as we Chicago move White into Sox. May. Brought to Third you by State, State Farm. Number it's 25. the White Sox in first. In the second spot, the Twins. In third place, it's the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. That brings up Mark Tian, Ricky Romero's growth this season. Part of it, if he can cut down on the walks, that ERA is going to go down. Well, it absolutely is. And that's the thing with young pitchers. Sometimes they don't trust themselves to throw it in the strike zone. If he can figure, you know what, if I can hit corners when I'm behind the counts, I'll still get outs. I don't need to walk people. Change up, swung on and missed. That's the out number two. Designated hitter. Okay, Cam shows 85 miles per hour on the velocity and not much movement at all. Hit in the air to left center. And that one falls in there for a single. Fantastic chance here. And for Sednik's batting. In the top ten and hits. Two down. Runners at first and second. First pitch. Here it comes. Fouled off. Well hit towards the middle. Hill feels that one around. Throws on the first side is retired. So no runs, two hits, and they strand two. Toronto two, the White Sox one. Cito Gaston, a look on camera. And uh, probably very happy to have that one run lead at this moment. Leading it off is Vernon Wells. Over his career, 3 0 3 off the White Sox. Ball. That pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. One zero is a fastball that runs away to an O. Here's the pitch. It's fouled off. And that swung on and hit. Rios. One away. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners. This lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient. They let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. Cut fastball swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Well, he throws his cut fastball hard, and it has that good movement. He still gets that up in the zone. Was able to blow it by him at the left. That'll retire Snyder. And Lynn's batting. Last season, two for two against Danks. Here's the first pitch to Lynn. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. You can really stay out of big trouble in the big inning if you can spot your fastball down in the zone. He swings now and really hit that. Rios will field. That one's grabbed. Side retired. Nobody left on base. No runs or hits here. Hope you have your mittens on. It is cold. Uh, tune in on the radio to our broadcast. Getting colder here as it gets later. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Lined right at the second baseman. That's one down. We're breaking the action here. Let's look at the hit leaders on our State Farm leaderboard. And it's Paul Canerco now. 
uh, Paul Canerco just put together another solid season. He's never going to be a guy that hits for a great average, 265, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup. 28 home runs, 88 RBIs in 152 games. It's strike one, can't make contact on the fastball. Canerco certainly one of those players you look at as far as your offense is concerned. Swung on, line to right field. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. The Blue Jays. So look at what they've got here in May. They'll wrap up the series with the White Sox on Sunday. Then they'll be taking on the Red Sox, led by that bat of Kevin Euclid. Great series there. That'll be a three-game series. Following that, they have to deal with Ian Kinsler, the Rangers coming into town. Good chance there to make up for the losses in the previous series between the two. He's number one in runs scored in the league. First pitch to Quinton. And he swings and hits this one foul. Romero's now got the count 0 and 2. Here's a swing and a line drive. Gets down. The go ahead runs on base. The opportunity for offense is right now. I tries to sneak one down and in to get the strike three call, but he fights it off. Outstanding job at the plate. And that is so demoralizing for a pitcher. You work so hard to get ahead in the count, and then you give up a base hit. Strike started off the at bat 0 and 1. You talk about Gordon Beck. Now swing and a shot towards second. One. And they get it. They turn two. Save your arm. Do it by pitching only eight times in one inning, three outs. It's Hill at the plate. Great season. Top ten in RBIs. Number two, Aaron Hill. Danks gets set and delivers. Starts him off with one at the knees for a strike. Oh, he's having some kind of season this year, Gary. Really the guy leading this team's offense and some kind of offensive production. 1-0 is a curve and a called strike. Uh, great stuff from the pitcher. Now he's ahead 0-2. He can go in so many different directions. Ball. Low for a ball to Hill. Good spot there. Just down a little bit out of the zone. Tried to get him to chase. He wouldn't go for it. And the one two pitch from Danks. Line drive. And it's caught by Ramirez. Now, this shortstop makes it look easy, but there's nothing easy about that. Those hard line drives often are like knuckleballs coming at him, but he made the play. And Encarnacion's first look. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. Well, that's a quality fastball right there, just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. It's fouled away. Here's a fly ball to straightaway left. So Encarnacion is set down. That's two gone. Now the hitter just out in front of this one, causing him to lift the ball to the outfield. The left fielder makes an easy play. And Ruiz settles in. He gets a walk a lot. The American League has him in the top five. Cutter just misses. 1-0. and oh. It's all about patience and discipline, the name of the game. He's not afraid to wait it out. He understands the first strike may not be the best strike he sees. And that one is in there, his second hit today. To That'll bring Lyle Toronto Overbay Blue up. Game. I've got a moment to see how the Blue Jays are doing this year rank-wise in the American League. First in triples, second in runs scored, and they're the number two team in slugging percentage, which goes a long way to driving in runs because it allows you to drive in runners from first base instead of just when they're in scoring position. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1-0. Career, 0 for 3 off John Danks. 1-0 pitch, a slider in there, 1-1. He has great bite on this slider, throwing it down and into the hitter. Gets away with one, and he gets in for the strike. Hit on the ground towards second. Throws to second. That'll be a force out and the third out. And so a good inning for John Danks. And Alex Surrios to lead on. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored, top five. And he starts Rios out. Swings and misses the slider, 0 and 1. The pitch, he's hacking at the ground on that one. That ball is a strike. 
shot towards the hole and that is in there the tying run is on base. That's going to bring up A.J. Pruszynski. Let's take a moment to check out the slugging percentage leaders, courtesy of State Farm. Well, it's such an asset to an offense when you hit the ball out of the ballpark, and these guys are clearly so important to their teams. That ability to drive in a run from first base or to drive yourself in from the plate. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. Runner on first. Here's the pitch. Hit hard down the right field side. That's one down. And if you're spending time with mom, show her you really care. Some quality time. Tune in Mother's Day. It'll be Alex Rodriguez and the New York Yankees. They take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. Start time is 8 Eastern. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. Pitch out. Nothing was on, though. Romero's now got the count 0 and 2. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. He's up with it. That's one out. And two. They got both of them that time. Seven pitches and it's done. That's how you save your arm and go deep into a game. Blue Jays still. It's McDonald at the plate. Shortstop, number six, John McDonald. Danks gets set and delivers. That one's in the dirt. Nice stop. Cutter just off the black and he falls behind 2 and 0. Change up called strike 2 and 1. But Gary awfully tough to read this pitch out of his hand. He has great deception, makes it look like a fastball. It just comes out so much slower. Lays off that time, but it's in there. A knee high strike. He evens things at two. Up the middle. And it gets through two for two. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. They wrap up this Toronto series on Sunday. After that, they meet up with Joe Maurer, a road series facing the Twins. That's a team they beat pretty soundly the last time around. That'll be Tuesday and Wednesday. And then they'll grapple with another American League Central team. The Royals hosting that one. We're quite a bit of time away from home for, for them over these next several games. And we're going to see Chavez here. Lifetime 176 against the White Sox. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. On the way. On the ground to second. He grabs it. Over to second for one. Back to first, not in time. Not quick enough on the relay. They get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. And Wells settles in, first pitch. Line softly to center field, and that's a base hit. Wells on board. Dorado here's a position to get something done. A real solid approach, trying to work gap to gap up the middle of the field. Gets a fastball on the outer third of the plate, but able to stay on it and get himself a base hit to center. That pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. Ready with a 1-0. This is in the air, straight away left. Two down. Well, we talk about the extra bases. Let's see on our State Farm leaderboard who's on top in triple. But when you hit a double, you have to think you put a lot of pressure on the pitcher. But think about when you hit a triple, how much pressure not only does it put on a pitcher, but on the defense to have to be perfect to not allow you to score. And I tell you what, one of the most exciting players you'll see in baseball. The 1-0 pitch. Hard ground at a short. And Ramirez fields the ball. Throw is in time, and he is out at third. John Danks comes off the mound. Really needs the offense to come through for him. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. 
hit sharply down the line and that gets the tying run on board. And that's going to bring Scott Pesetnik up. We're heading into May. This is a look at the standings for the East. Brought to you by State Farm. Yankees in first place. The Orioles second place. Blue Jays in third. Red Sox seated fourth. And it's the Rays in the last slot. One for two in the ballgame. The runner on first. No outs. First pitch. Taps this one foul off to the left. Romero's now got the count 0 and 2. Well, anytime you see that breaking ball and you know it's going to be down and away, the only way you can hit it is if you have to be looking for it. You have to negate any other pitch he throws and just sit on that one. Still a tough pitch to hit. He couldn't come through. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. Top five AL and runs scored. First pitch and he misses the fastball, strike one. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate. Day in and day out, that consistency is critical to their success. There's one. Decides not to try for the double play, hangs onto it. Quickly, let's check out the league leaders in runs batted in, brought to you by State Farm. Well, these are the kind of guys that decide games right here. They thrive on situations with runners on base to come up and deliver, and they have been getting it done. And Paul Canerco to bat. He's the league leader in ribbies. Two outs and a man on first. And he offers at the circle change and misses 0 and 1. Here's the pitch. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Canerco now will look to tighten up that zone. Well, all anybody wanted to talk about before the game today was the quality at bats he had with runners in scoring position. He drove in six runs in his last game. And Paul Canerco strikes out, could not make contact. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. Blue Jays still protecting this lead. It's Aaron Hill to lead it off. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Aaron Hill. Here's the pitch to Hill. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. On the ground to short. Fielded by Ramirez. And so he'll retire. Routine ground ball to short. He makes it look routine. Retires it off. This one's grounded foul. Wide of first. Here it comes. And that's a strike. And Carnacion's going to have to take a defensive position here. Still 0 and 2. The pitch. That one gets passed. It'll end up at the backstock, but no damage done. The one-two pitch. Swing and a line drive. Okay. And he steps on first. That's the second out. That's a nice play at first. Taking care of it himself. Doing a nice job handling the glove. And the first pitch. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect on one. No balls, one strike. Here's Danks. Beckham throws to first side is retired. And a good half inning there, gone in short order. And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, and John Crook. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. Leading the MLB in batting average. Swinging and a miss, and he falls behind on the count 0-1. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. So Quinton is retired. Our State Farm leaderboard, teams who have great control, not walking people. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Mariners. Blue Jays third. The Rays fourth. And it's the Yankees, number five. 
Well, the philosophy for both these teams is throw strikes. Do not beat yourself. Do not give base on balls. Make the opposition put it in play. And here's the first one. Didn't get around in time. 0-1. There's a swing, a ball hit high, deep, straightaway left field. And they're happy to tie that one up. Back to an even ball game with that solo shot. solo shot that has an impact on the chances of winning and it shows up right here on our Pepsi WPA graph. Well he looked like he got the pitch in his wheelhouse and he just drove it out of the ballpark. And you get behind in a ball game you want to get back early yeah, get okay. your get your yeah, mental Chicago set back and they've done that. Now this Better inning isn't over yet they have a chance 51. to still tack on some more runs. Alex. Like Gary really Alex. important for the Sox right there to tie this up. Now if Chicago can get a big hit they've got a chance to take the lead. Swung on by Rio, strike one. Anytime, Steve, at this point of a ball game, you get back, get it tied up with a big hit like that, you got a lot of excitement going. Yeah, you're right, but from the pitching perspective, not too exciting on his thought. Swinging and a miss, and it's now one and two. You saw their last game. You saw what a big part of their offense he was contributing with three base hits. He strikes out Alex Rios and a swing and a miss. Got him to chase that ball down and away. Good pitch. Not real good execution by the hitter. It's going to be Przinski. And one of the league's most prolific hitters in the top five. And it's fouled off. Pitch on the way. Romero's now got the count 0-2. Hit sharply towards the hole. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. So they pick up a run on the home run and pull even. We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. Lyle Overbay will lead it off. First base, number 35, Lyle Overbay. And he starts over Bay out. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. The pitch. And with two strikes on him, Lyle Overbay now will see whether or not he can punch one through. This is why changing speeds is so important for a pitcher. You get the hitter off balance even more effective when it's down in the zone. Over Bay will foul that one away. Over Bay, he'll fight off another one, extending the at bat. Well, you can tell right there that the batter is in protection mode. Anything close, he's just one trying to put two. it in play. The fact that he fouled it off will keep this at bat going. The one two on its way. Hit on the ground, up the middle. And that sets down over Bay. Well, Gary, you know, he's settling into a groove right here. And that's six in a row that he's set down. One out, faces him. Danks gets set and delivers. Tian. And McDonald retired. Oh, Gary, he's pitching well right now. I mean, that's seven straight that he's retired. He is really locked in. First pitch to him. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And there's the third out. No runs, no hits, no one left on. And we are still knotted up in Chicago. You take a look at Cito Gaston. He's got to be thinking about jumping out in front here. His ball club, a great position to do so. They can get on the board next. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0-1. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two-seam fastball. Fouled off that first pitch, 0 and won the count. Strike 
Swing and a rocket towards short. And that is in there. The go-ahead run on base. Boy, I don't know on that count, Steve. Number one, the fact that he swung is kind of a surprise. I don't know how he hit that where it was. You're right. On an 0-2 count, you have to protect the plate. Sometimes it's a defensive swing, but sometimes it works out. Here's the first pitch to Kotsek. This one's grounded near third. Foul. Romero's now got the count 0-2. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. This one swung on, hit down the line and right. This is a one hopper off the wall. Now the State Farm leaderboard shows us some lineups that have really gotten into the swing of things during the past 10 games. Number one, the Indians. The Red Sox in second. The Angels third. The Tigers fourth. And at number five on the list, the White Sox. With this sort of power production, it's tough to pitch around any one hitter in the lineup because it does speak to the power depth that they have throughout the course of the lineup. Hot shot towards the hole. And that ball gets through and the runner's going to come home. Well, he saw a pitch that he really liked, and he did not miss it. A really nice job with nobody out keeping this inning going and picking up that RBI. Great, great piece of hitting. So, Alexei Ramirez is batting. Steve, great determination by this offense. It looks like they may take charge of this ball game late. Well, they needed that one right there, Gary. That was a big at bat. Now they have the lead. Now they're looking to add on to it, too. Take the pressure off the late inning pitcher. That ball is belted deep left center. That ball is way back there. Gone. That's good for three. Now they lead by four, a three run homer. That's the second home run so far in this game off the pitcher here, so they're looking like maybe they're starting to figure something out. You can survive the home run ball if you can spread them out, but it's getting a little dicey now. Oh, and Casey now, Jansen is the pitcher. As the Blue Jays bring in their reliever. I'll tell you what, this is one of those decisions you can go either way. He's pitched pretty well to this point. But it is getting late. Do you want to take any chances? The manager decides to go to the pen. And Paul Canerco to bat. Swing sends this one on the line to right center. This one finds its way around, rolling all the way to the wall. Now State Farm brings you the league leaderboard. Here's who's getting the most extra base hit. He'll hold there at second base, crediting with a double. Runner on second, RBI opportunity for Carlos Quinton. Here's the pitch. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Oh boy, this is uh, getting a little ridiculous here. Looks like batting practice. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. That ball was well struck. Good Number piece of hitting. The infield playing back. Jordan. Had a little more ability to cover some ground, but he's able to get a bind. And Beckham's in the box. He homered earlier in the ball game. First pitch on the way. There's a swing and a liner towards first. And Overbay makes the catch. And that will hold the runners at the corner. Here's Alex Rios now. RBI chance. And the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays and then continuing on when he got line towards second. From his knees, he got him. What a play! Back to first, not in time. One and two won't get. Nice diving stop to get that force at second base. Well, pretty darn good play right there to track it down, then pivot and get the force. It's going to be Przinsky. This is a potent offense on the field right now, really dominating. Well, as you can see, they're just pouring it on right now. They got out to an early lead, and the hits keep on coming, and so do the runs. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. 
And you do get feelings in these games, and the feeling right here is this thing is uh, out of reach. Well, we have to credit the hitters, certainly, but I think you have to put some blame on the pitching. They just did not get it done today. Let's see if they can put an end to this rally. So uh, he ended that half inning with a strikeout. They break the tie in a big way. Leading it off is Vernon Wells. Try it again here, just one for three thus far. Vernon Wells. And Wells settles in, first pitch. And he watches a cut fastball to start the at-bat for strike one. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so th they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do oh. something now. Good eye by Vernon Wells staying away from that one, and we're even. Danks gets set and delivers. And Conerco getting to it. And he'll just keep it himself, tagging for the out. And we've got Snyder batting. He flew out his last time up. And here's the first one. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. Look, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning to try to generate some runs. They need to score here in this eighth inning and not leave it all to the ninth. Strike two. Travis Snyder now down on the count. That two. pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. Swing and a miss on the cutter that time. For the two down. Okay, now we're going to get a chance to see the cutter here, Gary. Well, you'll see this thing get tracked to the lower corner of the plate. It looked like the batter thought he had this one, but in the end, it was just too much for him to handle. And uh, not the way he was looking to end that at bat, John. First pitch to him. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, listen, uh, just keep getting outs right now. You're, the countdown's there. You only need. Grounded up the middle. And it gets through. There is his first base hit of this ball game. It has been a tough day offensively. You can smile a little now. That'll bring up Aaron Hill. It's a real tough pitch to hit right there with that breaking ball. Good late break on it, but he stays with it and punches a single out to the outfield. Danks gets set and delivers. A swing line to left center. And in there, second hit for him in the ball game on his fourth plate appearance. Good offensive chance here. Well, even though he had two hits in the last game, his team lost. But he keeps swinging a bat like this. Good things are going to happen. First pitch on the way. They set up away. Cutter misses. 1-0. Oh. We're looking at this guy's pitch count. He's up over 80 pitches thus far. You wonder how long they're going to let him go. Foul ball behind home plate. Swung on line to right center field. That one falls. This should bring home Lynn. And Lynn comes in. And Hill also comes in. Now batting. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double. Put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. Oh, this is a biggie right here. A great matchup right now, Gary. Well, you get a feeling watching them there. Feeling. Comeback fever, Steve, going on here. Look, Gary, after that hit, they're not out of this just yet. A couple more big hits. They're right back in this game. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And in there, the Blue Jays with a run. He's having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. And now, Lyle Overbay. Not a lot of time left. Not a lot of outs to work with. Focus here on every at-bat. Now, Gary, you know what? They're chipping away at this lead, and just in time, too. They don't have... Smash towards the middle, and Ramirez feels the ball. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. They pick up four hits in the inning and three runs across the plate. It is get-back time for the Blue Jays. Now they've got a... 
Here's a look at Ozzy. Ozzy Guillen. No, he's not happy with his club. Uh, still out in front, but he knows they cannot afford to have innings like that and still win. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. That's on that off-speed pitch, but can't connect 0-1. The pitch, a swing and a fly ball to left center field. And Lind with the catch. State Farm brings you the teams leading the way offensively over the last 10 games. Number one, the White Sox. The Orioles second. In the third spot, the Indians. Red Sox fourth. And fifth best, the A's. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Oh, and he gets to it. For the Chicago White Sox, left fielder. Number 24. And Posednik's back. Had an RBI single his last time to the plate. Here's the delivery. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0-1. He just rears back and throws this one. A little something extra on it. No chance of putting it in play. That second pitch cuts on a fastball. Misses. And it's 0-2. Oh man, there's the big bender. Struck him outside, retired. And they're held in check here in this half inning. White Sox summit, Blue Jays five. Taking a look, Cito Gaston. On his mind right now, well, ninth inning strategy to get this thing tied back up. Offensive production's the key. And the first pitch. And that's in there. Jenks ahead 0-1. Uh, nobody out here in the ninth. You know what they're trying to do. They need to get somebody on and bring the tying run to the plate. That's absolutely oh. critical because that will put pressure on the pitcher. Ground ball headed for the middle. Ramirez, a nice oh, play on that one. For the and McDonald retired. Uh, defensively, a one out here in the ninth inning. I mean, you want to make a play. Just get an out. You will trade a run for an out here with a two-run lead. First pitch on the way. Fastball in there. 0 and 1. Now that he's elevated his eyes looking for that high fastball, let's see if he goes back down in the zone. That one's drilled to short. Fielded by Ramirez. And that'll set down Chavez. Well, it's, it's, uh, their hope is dwindling right now. Down by two. One out left to play with. And they're going to have to try to come up with some big hits right here to try to win this one, Gary. It's 0 and 1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Jenks with a delivery. Ball. Tried to get him to go after that slider, but it's one and two. The one-two pitch. Line drive. And on to first for out number three, and that's going to do it. Well, Gary, Chicago comes away the victors in this one. They play good all around, solid baseball, with contributions from many players. Now we present our Pepsi Clutch performer. Definitely a difference maker in this one, John Danks. But you know, Gary, there's no way you can win baseball games without great starting pitching. And he came through in this one with the most important performance of the game. And that's basically the definition of what it takes to be the Pepsi Clutch performer of the game. And Steve, that ought to send these folks home happy. Oh, no question about it. They get the win in a close game. A lot of excitement and enthusiasm. They're ready for the next one. Great day for baseball here at 2K Sports. Thank you for tuning in.